Today I'm beginning a series of videos on my five alternative build mini modulars. First up, Central Perk. on the can get back in that can so last March I was deep into quarantine boredom and I was perusing YouTube videos and I came across this youtuber by the name of under the bricks he hasn't really posted in a long time and I'm starting to get a little I hope he's okay are you okay buddy anyway he would take Lego sets uh, just using the pieces in the set and create mini modulars and I thought this is a pretty cool idea it was a really cool way to kind of build up a small Lego city so last March, after watching a few of his videos, I decided I think it's time to take my wife's Central Perk set and turn it into one. And actually, I took inspiration from him and I made five mini modulars. And it wasn't too long before I got my hands on some of LEGO's official modular sets, and the rest is history. Now I am full on LEGO City skyscrapers, total custom insanity. My wife loves it too. <laughs> This is the set that started it all. This is the set that started the obsession. It will always hold a special place inside my little Lego heart. <laughs> With that being said, it is time to destroy it. If it's so special, why are you destroying it? That is a valid point. And quite frankly, I deserve that. Hypocrite. My humble city has grown from a few mini modulars to this. And you know, I think Central Perk it should grow with it. The current Central Perk set is just a little too small. Could it be any smaller? So I decided that I was gonna make some videos on my mini modulars. I thought, you know, it was a special moment in my Lego journey and I thought that I would just, you know, share a bit of it with you guys. Enough of this sappy stuff. Legion! Central Perk is built on an eight by 16 stud foundation of plates with the building itself taking up half of that. So once you factor in that the walls take up an additional four rows of studs, you're left with just 36 studs to create the interior with. It's toy like toyger. Like a toyger. Yeah, that's not really a whole lot of room for detail, but I did use a couple tricks to free up some space on the inside, and I'm gonna point those out as we go on. It always seemed like Ross was the last friend to show up so I decided to have him walking up to the door. I converted one of the lamppost beam pieces from the inside into a structure that holds up some flowers. I turned a couple coffee mugs into some light fixtures, and I put the chalkboard advertisement for Phoebe's concert under the window. On the back, I wanted to create you know, a little bit of an homage to Joey. Uh, there's a pizza box, you know, it could be a pizza poster. Eh. As well as the ad for Joey's Ichiban Lipstick for Men. Ichiban Lipstick for Men! Saiko! The inside of the first floor is basically the entrance where you'll find Gunther hard at work at his workstation. We've got the menu, Gunther's counter. I used the large coffee machine to act as part of the wall. This was one of those saving space tricks. And seeing as this set was a little light on the bricks used to build up walls, it helped act as a wall as well. Little trick. On the second floor, I put the iconic Central Perk window right in the middle, and actually the majority of the second floor fascia is built sideways. Studs not on top. Snot. It's not gonna do it. Wouldn't be prudent at this juncture. And luckily, it's not meant to have all four sides being viewed, because this was a tricky build to do using these pieces in such a small area. On the inside, Chandler and Monica are sitting on a scaled down version of that iconic orange couch. You'll see that the couch is built into the wall, which is another example of how I saved some space and worked around the limited brick availability. And lastly, I added some decorations on the wall. I mean, I'm assuming there'd be decorations on the wall. We've never really seen that wall, maybe like once or twice. And then on the roof, you've got Phoebe singing Smelly Cat or maybe some songs about her dead mom. And Rachel and Joey are up there as well. As before, I took another couch that was in the set and I incorporated it into the wall. I think that the red and brown of the couch work really well with the green exterior and the red and white awnings that I tried to put on each floor of the Central Perk. And then lastly, I took the two lights used 
to light the TV set and made them into stage lights. Now they can have some shows at night too, you know? It's a good deal. The lights make for a pretty tight fit when placing them next to taller buildings, but as you can see, the central perk looks pretty good next to the other full-size modulars. The lights add some height to the building, but for the most part, the central perk is a two-story building. I think that's okay. It's not like cafes need to be these large, towering buildings. Again, hypocrite much? This mini modular is more in the realm of charming, quaint, mom and pop, boutique-y than a full-blown restaurant. But as I stated before, this mini modular's days are numbered. I will be replacing it with a much larger, newer central perk, more suited for the likes of Brickadelphia. That's one of the things that I love about LEGO. You can create something, enjoy it for a while, tear it down, build something different. Ugh. Transitions. Segways. Let's give it a shot. As a matter of fact, I took an existing building that I had in Brickadelphia, I tore it down and I made something bigger and better. I'm gonna put a link to that right here. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave me a comment down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching guys. We'll catch you next time. Bye! Oh, is there some kind of friends thing that I could say at the end? Friends. How many of us really have them? Friends. People that we can depend on.